So today we're going to do the handover video on the Eldis Auto Quest CV40. We're going to start on the outside and then we're going to move on to the inside. So firstly coming over to the passenger side you've got your fill up points. This vehicle has got Ab Blue which is just down there and obviously your diesel tank is up at the top. Opening up the passenger door, on the passenger side you'll notice that you've got your bonnet release catch underneath here. Pull that to release the bonnet. Before showing you underneath the bonnet, you can see this specific model has got Remis Cab blind specced. All you've got to do to operate these is simply pinch and then pull, like so. Pull out and let them connect up to the side via the magnetic strip. And then pull back and tuck it back in and let it connect in like so. Now I typically find with these it's a lot easier if you lead from the bottom, so lead the blind from the bottom to let it connect, as sometimes they can get caught, um, as they are a little bit finicky, so just bear that in mind. <clears throat> as a rule of thumb with anything in a motorhome as well, is if it feels like it's being forced, you are probably doing something wrong, so just bear that in mind, so if it does feel like it's getting twisted or anything, just take your time with it. Now coming underneath the bonnet, there's not many things that you need to know underneath here. The main things that you need to know is if you're ever jump starting the vehicle. I'll pop the bonnet now and show you underneath there. So when it comes to jump starting the vehicle, your negative terminal is just here at the front. And your positive terminal is underneath here, under a black cap, just there. A little bit difficult to see on the video, but just underneath here there's a little plus sign. And that indicates the positive terminal. So if you're jump starting, that's how you do so. They're the main things that you need to know, but just to point out a couple more things. You have your engine oil down here with your dipstick below that, your brake disc fluid, your engine coolant, your power steering fluid, and then finally, you can see that you've got your washer fluid which is in the corner there. Moving on, onto the side of the vehicle, you can see that this specific vehicle has been um, specced with a gas tank. So instead of using gas bottles, you can simply fill up the gas using a pump um, at a gas station. All you need to do to operate this is simply push in to release the valve. This is just on a wire. And then you can put the pump in and fill up the gas. The best way of telling that that's full is, for example, when, you're, uh, when you put the pump on, it'll go high pitched. Once it's done so, you know that it is full. Moving on below, you can see that you've got two drain down points. In the vehicle, you'll have three main drain down points, two of which are obviously here. You've got your fresh water drain down point, which is the blue tap just there. You've got your waste water drain down point, which is the gray tap just there. And then finally, your boiler drain down point, which is actually internal to the vehicle. Now, firstly, your fresh and your waste. When you're on site, you'll have a massive grid that you need to drive over. Once you're over the grid, you simply need to turn your valves. Turn them like that and that will empty the entire system. Do the same thing with the wastewater and that'll, uh, that'll uh, drain down the water. Now when it comes to your drain down points, what I often say is if you have got uh, a lot of water in the van and you need to drain it down, drain the majority of the water out onto the grid and then when you're traveling home, leave all your drain down points open, including your, uh, your wastewater, uh, sorry, including your boiler drain down, because as you travel home, the vibrations of the road are gonna get all that water out for you. The main thing to ensure is that you have never got any water in, in the vehicle when the vehicle isn't in use, especially for the boiler, because if you do, you do run the risk of it freezing. In the warmer months, it's not too much of a concern, but I would still advise getting into the habit of doing that. So for this time of the month, you know, December time, you need to ensure that everything is drained down completely. Next, you can see up here, you've got your, uh, just slide up the cap like that. This is for your fresh water point, and this is how you uh, fill the water up. All you need to do is get a food grade hose pipe so no bacteria builds up in the, uh, in the pipe. Stick that straight into there, and then let the tank fill. Once it's overflowing, obviously you know that you've uh, filled up the tank and you can attach the cap back on. <clears throat> Coming over to the side now, you'll notice that you've got your cassette toilet, which is just underneath here. I'll open this up now and I'll show you how to uh, remove that. With the locker open, you can see that you've got access to the cassette. Now, the main thing with the cassette is before removing, always make sure that the blade on the toilet is closed. I'll show you what that blade is on the inside of the vehicle. However, 
when removing the cassette that needs to be closed if it's open what you'll do is you'll come to remove this and it'll get jammed uh, and stuck some customers have been tempted to pull that and what will happen is that will ultimately break and snap the mechanism in the cassette so you'll just need to have a new one so do bear that in mind to remove it all you need to do is push up on the orange tab like so and slide out like that it's dead simple once out I'll just place it on the ground for you so it's easy for you to see you can see that you've got your funnel on the front along with a couple of buttons at the back to empty this all you need to do is pull out the funnel remove the cap and then using this orange button at the back click that in which will release an internal vacuum which will allow you to pour out all the contents easily once you've done that you can put a bit of water in there just to give it a swill out and wash it out and then I put the cap back on fold in the, uh, the funnel and then you can slide it straight back in now you will notice that you have got another little uh, <clears throat> orange tab here and as you can see that does turn this should always remain in the uh, in this position you should never need to turn this in essence this is what makes contact contact with the blade on the toilet if your blade is open this is what blade opens the cassette this should always be in this position you should never need to open that or move it if that is slightly off and you try to put it in again you're going to run the risk of it being jammed to put back in all you need to do line it up slide it in until the little tab here connects into place and locks in and that's now not going anywhere next you've then got your hookup point this is where you're going to hook up to mains electric so you get your big hookup cable that connects into there and that'll give you 230 volt throughout the vehicle whilst i'm here as well just so you can see on the roof you have got an aerial at the front there uh, at the back rather uh, and i'll show you how that operates dead simple on the inside again moving around to the back on the back you've got a built-in reversing camera and opening up the barn doors will give you access to the back whilst we're at the back you can see that you've got your two bench seats here which will turn into a bed underneath these you will have storage and you can have a little, uh, a little bit of access there currently your carpets are in at the moment on all your windows you have got a blackout blind as well as a built-in fly screen as you can see and on the main big door on the side you can obviously open and close the big fly screen um, to the entrance I'll show you how to make the bed up at the back uh, shortly uh, but just to complete the outside of the vehicle moving on the final thing is your awning your awning is dead simple and easy as you saw on the floor in there you have got an awning uh, winder which will simply connect into there this is a thool awning so you in essence need to turn uh, push it in turn it halfway which will allow it to lock in once you've done that you can wind it out with your awning wind it out to a point that you can reach so you can then drop the legs out and let them take the way to the awning you'll simply then angle the legs and wind it out bit by bit to get it out to about three or four meters now if it is windy do not use your awning um, can't stress that enough because as you can imagine it is a massive sail on the side of your van so if you get any bit of wind underneath it's just going to take it off ripping the canvas and potentially damaging and harming someone um, so do bear that in mind please ensure that if it is uh, you know windy not to use the awning so now in the vehicle uh, you can see that you've got your control panels just here on the left hand side as you walk in so to begin with at the top this is your main control panel dead easy and simple to use you've got your master switch at the top there as you can see that turns on and off everything including your lights beneath that you have got just your light button so you want to keep your panel on but turn on and off the lights you can do you've then got a little door light which will turn it on and off on the outside and then finally in this panel you have got a little tap which indicates your pump now your pump is dead simple what you need to ensure is that your tank is uh, completely full with water never run the pump without water once you've got water in the van click your pump on and then go to each of your taps including your shower turn all your taps on and turn them to hot what that'll do is it'll pull fresh water from the fresh water tank into the boiler system which will prime the boiler 
and then we'll spit it out of the tap. Once that's running steadily, you've primed your system for your hot water and you can flick it over to cold and do the same thing. Now the reason that I always tell people to run it on the hot water first is your boiler will take approximately 10 litres of water. If you're on site, obviously it's going to take a good while for that to heat up the water. So if that's the first thing you do, run some water in that boiler and then turn your heating system on. By the time you need your hot water, it's most definitely got to temperature um, so you can use it. Uh, going back to your pump, uh, you can leave your pump on because it has a micro switch built in so it will activate and deactivate the pump whenever you need it. Just please ensure that obviously you have got water in the system before running the pump to ensure you don't burn it out. Coming back up to the top, you can see that you've got your battery level. So this is for, if I click that there, your leisure battery as you can see, which at the moment we're at full. And then your fresh water tank, which just indicates there, we've got a little bit in at the moment. Um, but as you can see, it just shows your level there. You've then got a light, which is this next panel here, which is just your mood lighting up at the top. Coming below this, you can see you've got two separate panels. Firstly, this small uh, little panel uh, indicates uh, your gas system. Um, level basically you can see you've got full um, full bars at the moment so you've got uh, the, the vehicles full up with gas at the moment and you can turn on and that uh, off um, if you want to, to view that now across from there this is your whale system your whale system is the uh, is what operates all the heating system in the vehicle for your water and your uh, space heater now to operate this all you need to do is click your button. So for your water heating, click your button, like so. You can see it turns it on. Now at the moment, this little flame icon indicates gas. Your control panel, um, or your heating rather, can run off gas um, or electric. Or I believe with these a combination of both. Now, because we're not hooked it up at the moment, it's only going to give me the option of gas, which is a nice feature, because if you only had... Uh, if you had, if you weren't hooked up and you had the option of electric, it won't allow obviously the vehicle to be fueled with the electric because you've nothing there, and you'd probably get an error code. So with that, it's dead simple. It eliminates that that issue of getting uh, the possibility of getting an error code. So with that in mind, it'll only allow you to select gas as we are now not hooked up. But as I say, you can run it off gas or electric depending on what your preference is. So water heating's up at the top. To flick through the options, you can click that again, on and off, like so. You have got a frost protection as well, uh, which just will keep the, uh, the boiler ticking over, especially in the colder months, which again is worth having. To turn that off, all you need to do is click it like so, and that will turn off the heating system for your fresh water. Um, next, you've then got heating um, on the inside of the vehicle, so in essence the space heater. So click that. And again, because we're only on, um, we're not hooked up, it's only giving me the option of gas. Again, a nice feature, but you can change that and flick that through when you are hooked up. Now, depending on what you're on, uh, will depend on how hot you want uh, the uh, the system to go. If you're just running it off gas, um, you can uh, you can obviously change your temperatures here because it's off gas. Gas gets the vehicle up to temperature very very quickly. Um, because it uses the equivalent of six kilowatt electric, if that makes sense. Um, so with that in mind, you won't need it on for long before you start feeling a difference. When you do have it on electric, however, it's only running off two kilowatt electric due to the, the power supply um, that is allocated to the vehicle. So with that in mind, um, you may want to just have that on full, uh, just, to, uh, just to obviously help it get up to temperature initially. So coming away from the control panel, next you have your seating area here. You have got belts underneath here for uh, passengers and obviously a little table here for your uh, when you're eating. Now underneath this, you have got a little bit of storage underneath that cupboard. The uh, main thing underneath it though is your RCD breaker. If you unlock this little uh, cupboard, you can see that your RCD breaker is here. It's this white box and this contains your fuses for the vehicle and also your trip box. If the vehicle ever trips, you can come to here and uh, and check your fuses now a little uh, a bit of advice and a, a bit of a tip is on here you will have again it's quite difficult to see because the lighting but you will have a little t button it's just there up at the top 
can appreciate it's quite difficult to see on the photo um, or on the picture. Um, but you have a little button on there which has a T on it. That stands for test and in essence if you're on site and you can't get any electric to the vehicle so nothing's working um, but, uh, but let's say uh, you're hooked up. If you click that little T button and all the uh, the the trip switches trip, you know you're getting electric to the vehicle. So it's therefore not a fault with your hookup cable or the site. It's a fault with your vehicle. So from there you can check all your fuses. So more often than not, it is a fault with the site. So for example, the site could have tripped, um, but that will allow you to figure out um, and isolate the issue. Coming away from the lounge and back into the kitchen, we've spoken obviously about priming your system. In here you've got a bit of storage, um, as well as some taps down here, which if I uh, just get round. As you can see, these are grey little taps, and these are in essence isolator switches. You may have some more in the vehicle. If you do see them, you need to um, just leave them as they are. Don't turn them. Um, they are simply just for us and the technicians when working on your vehicle. So there's no need to isolate any uh, area. The only bit that you need to know is that control panel up there. So bear that in mind. Obviously, you've got your oven and grill here with your hob and your microwave, which is directly above that. Your microwave will, of course, only work on 230 volt and won't work when you're wild camping. So bear that in mind. Next, you've then got your fridge. Your fridge is a Dometic fridge and it's a three-way system. It's a three-way system um, because, in essence, there are a, a couple ways of operating it. So with the uh, control panel on, all you need to do, this is touch sensitive, so bear that in mind. Uh, all you need to do is click that button there. So you have a few options with this. As I say, there's uh, three options with it. Uh, so click that button, that activates everything. Now this vehicle uh, will run off 12 volts only. Uh, you can't run it off gas or electric, it's just purely 12 volt, which is good for, of course, wild camping uh, and will maintain your gas level. Now, to go through the options, clicking the mode bu button will allow you to run this um, uh, differently. So if you're having it on a normal mode, so for example, if you want the vehicle to, uh, to run um, as efficiently as possible, click your mode and select it onto performance there. As you can hear, the fan has just increased. Um, and that's running uh, as the uh, as it as it usually would. Now the quiet mode. If I click that now, you can see that just switches it to there. The quiet mode will uh, is brilliant for obviously when you're sleeping and you need the fridge to work. Um, I don't know whether you can hear it on the camera, but it's uh, it's quieting down considerably. And then boost the op the bo option of boost, as you can see, will in essence heighten everything up so it will increase the fan it will also lower the vehicle's temperature um, or fridge's temperature rather by default um, and what that's great for is for example if it is struggling so if it's a hot day it's going to focus on cooling the fridge if I stick it back onto normal mode you have got a little uh, temperature button here as well so you can change the temperature level depending on how cold you want the fridge now coming away from that, you can see I've just turned it off. Turning it off just includes holding your finger on that button and that'll turn off the fridge. Um, just to uh, open it, here we've got freezer up at the top and fridge below. What I recommend with these is it's a lot easier um, if you put cold things in and frozen things in the freezer, freezer as it does a very good job at maintaining the temperature. As it doesn't draw as much power as a normal domestic fridge, you've got to just bear that in mind. It's going to take it a little bit longer. <clears throat> Coming below this, you've got another great bit of storage with a uh, mattress in there at, up at the moment. It's like a topper, um, as you can see. And then opposite here, you have got your bathroom area. So in the bathroom, as I say, we've spoken about your uh, your hot water uh, and priming your system. Uh, your shower, this will pull off and you can connect that up to there to allow for your shower. But just beneath here, you've got your toilet. Now, as I mentioned outside, the main thing to know is that the cassette blade is always closed when not in use. So when you remove the cassette, it's not going to get jammed. The blade that I'm on about is this silver piece of plastic here. Pull that, push that away from you. That'll open the cassette so all the waste can drop into the cassette. Pull that back and that will close the cassette. So when in use, you need to open it so all the waste, as I say, will drop into the cassette. And then using your blue button which will uh, activate your flush, click that, 
and that will flush and empty the system. Once you've done that, close the cassette. You close the cassette for two reasons. The main reason being the odors will stop. Uh, it will it will stop the odors from escaping. Um, and the second reason, of course, will it'll get you into the habit of having that closed. So when you come to remove the cassette, you don't run into that issue of it jamming. Above, as I mentioned, that blue button will activate your flush. It's worth noting that you do need your pump on for that to operate. Um, and if the cassette is full, you'll get a red light on there to indicate that you need to empty it. So just moving into the back now, you can see you have got a space for a telly. And up at the top, as I mentioned on the outside, you've got your aerial. With this aerial, it's dead easy and dead simple. All you've got to do is turn it either on and off. At the moment, it's off. Turn that uh, click that down and that turns it on of course you do need your panel on for that to operate and you have got a little dial on here just to play around with the range dead simple dead easy and that will allow you to have signal to your telly coming away from the tv area you can see we're back into the lounge at the back and as i mentioned outside this is where your second or your main bed is i did forget to mention that up front um, you have got a spot uh, to have uh, a third berth, which is, if I just come back here, you can see I've got the infill cushion out there. How this operates is this table will lower. You need to uh, click this button to kink the leg, and that will allow it to drop down, which using the bar underneath will allow it to connect, and that will create the base of this small bed here. You can then use your infill cushions to fill that area. Now, coming back... To the uh, to the bed at the back. How this operates is you get either side of your um, bench seat and push them together and pull them together. That creates a big bed, and then using your cushions, they will infill in the middle and create a big bed. I'll do that for you now. And just like that, you can see that your bed is made up just by dropping them pillows um, cushions in the back. As I say, a mattress topper will be nice on here just to take. And then grooves out to the bed. But other than that, you're good to go. You can see that you have got these little cushions on here as well, which allow uh, the uh, finish and complete the backrest. They will just pull off, um, and they're on little press studs. Now moving away from the lounge area, um, as I mentioned outside, you have got a bit of storage underneath here. Your leisure battery is also located uh, in this bench seat on the driver's side, just so you are aware. Now finally but certainly not least is your final drain down point in the vehicle your drain down point is of course your boiler drain down point and that as i say is internal to the van that's located just underneath here flip this little lid down and you can see it gains you access underneath here the only thing that you need to know is what this little yellow valve does there now all this does is if you turn that towards you that will close the system and if you turn that away from you that'll open the system so if you're draining it down push it away and if you uh if you turn it forward uh, towards you that'll uh, that'll close it so when in use of course have it closed and when the vehicle is being drained down for the winter turn that and as i say when you are traveling off site leave all your drain down points open because that will ensure that all the water is, uh, is out of the vehicle. Now that concludes the handover video on the Eldis AutoQuest CV40. I hope you enjoyed.